transmitting to you from Old Heart Radio. You know you live in you know you live in uh, contemporary America where you're drinking fruit citrus infused water. Ooh, ooh la la! I'm actually um, drinking hand uh, squeezed grapefruit. Oh, your sounds, oh, dude. I was trying to outclass you, but your sounds way classier than mine. I'm just drinking apricot naturally essenced Lacroix. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Pomplamoose <laughs> for life. Pomplamoose for life for sure. Uh, well, okay. I guess, you know, here we are. We might here as well we say it. Uh, we're on, we're currently recording an episode of Matinee Edition. <laughs> oh boy. So um, um, I know we got cut off by the uh, Zoom time <laughs> limitations last week, but we yeah. were going to disclose a schedule and end up getting cut for time because yeah. Zoom is uh, apparently greedy. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was so shocked by that week for weeks. It seemed to have been like without limitation, letting me record whatever. Yeah. Damn them. Damn. Fucking, <laughs> fucking Zoom. Actually, uh, that's been very helpful. Yeah, they have been very helpful. Don't shut us down. Don't don't cut us, cut off uh, our Zoomage Zoom. Oh, uh, we're going to try and stick to a schedule from here on out. Yep. It was a uh, Monday matinee edition. Yep, Monday matinee edition. Uh, Tuesday's, yeah, there you go. Uh, Tuesday's an off day. <laughs> uh, and then coffee and contemplation on Wednesdays. Thursday off and then Friday, another coffee and contemplation. And yes. then Avi will be doing in tune on Saturdays. Hell yeah. And then on some of those off days, we might try and do some other random stuff like local yokels or just like sitting down and bullshitting exactly. with some people we like. So exactly. Like, I, I, yeah, like those, those open days are just like, they're, you know, TBD. They're really just yeah. dependent on like when we have a guest or when, you know, something else, yeah. you know, is, is recorded. So might, might get a, might get a nice little bonus episode week by week. Everyone, everyone. Exactly. exactly. But I think, you know, I think it's a good schedule. I think Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sure. Saturday hits, hits some fucking good, hits the good days. Keep the, the good content, days. Keep the content flowing. Exactly. Exactly. Like that. Like, like a, like a steady river. Like a uh, steady river. <laughs> Fair enough. A steady river of Oatly, because I Ooh. want Oatly to sponsor us one day. Steady I'm river of Oatly and trade coffee. Really trying, really trying to get that sponsorship money. Dude, <laughs> there it is. I was gonna, I was gonna say, because of our subject, um, a steady river of sewage water hitting the oh. green slums. God, uh, <laughs> if you can't pick up on what we might be touching on today, folks. We finally might, watched Parasite. We finally watched fucking Parasite. <laughs> so, yeah, dude. Uh, dude, what I just to start it off. If you, we're open to spoilers, it's been long enough. Yeah. The movie's been out for like six months or so. At this Definitely point. spoiler filled uh, conversation, but like you know, there you are. If you're really like gonna be a, a butt about it, yeah. Uh, that being said, I just want to say real quick, my man, that movie was so beautifully shot. Like that movie looked really gorgeous, really gorgeous. It was clean and just fucking. I I don't know. Like the the sets that they use, the building, like were, were fucking. Phenomenal. Yeah, I just love the it, it I love the look of it. It doesn't get much. You know, like that's some of the most beautiful contemporary filmmaking I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. quickly, pause the recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, um, pause. So yeah, Parasite, beautifully oh. shot, and overall just a phenomenal movie. Yeah. If you don't want spoilers? Stop listening now. <laughs> Boom. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's all you get. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's all you get. We'll be we'll be talking some other stuff later, but I mean, Parasite's going to take up the bulk of it. <laughs> I want to yeah. I want to start this with when I was and like I was never like the kid that was afraid of a like somebody like what something under the bed or like yeah somebody yeah. or like the monster in the closet type thing yeah. But in my teenage years, after seeing like some crazy news stories, I became like extremely paranoid about like hermits living in your home. Oh fuck yeah, dude! And and like I know, be I I'd heard something about something very some some crazy shit like that about like a dude living in a crawl space in somebody's home. Yeah. And like my house and and up until I, like I was nineteen, living with my parents, they 
it had this like crawl space in our basement that had like it it had like a little um was crazy there's like a rat had found its way in there at some point uh so yeah and you, you could actually you going could around no you I, I think we killed it pretty quick but there was a little hole and in the day you could see a bit of sunlight coming through it oh shit so i always was fucking terrified that there would be a dude down there so oh, when in God. that scene where they open up the bunker yeah. dude that shit it it scared the living fuck out of me. And Parasite is not a scary movie. It's a no, thriller. It's a th- and it's very unsettling. But, but like, I, I, it, it like shook me, like that scene, because it, it capitalized on just this like terrible fear from like my adolescence. Yeah, dude. Well, I, I mean, yeah, that shit's fucking terrifying. And there are, there, there, like, there are handfuls of stories out there. Yeah. Of people like living in other people's places and like popping out at night and shit. Yeah. And like, yeah, that shit would, would freak me the fuck out. I lived in this apartment just a little bit ago and like there was the access to like the attic, mm-hmm. like looked, it just looked like somebody could like readily access it really easily. And like, ha- you know, from the top and like, and every now and then we'd hear like, like noises from like the neighbors next door. And, but it sounded like, it always sounded like it came from above until like for a little bit of time, I was like, I was like, God damn dude. I was like, is there somebody fucking running around up above us? Yeah. <laughs> and like that's just i don't know just like that idea of somebody like like that in the parasite where they just like not even like necessarily doing you harm but just like invading your space man invading yeah, your privacy feel, is so dude cringy and, and as i was going to sleep last night you know there's that shot where the kid's eating the birthday cake and you see the dude like eyes pop out and they're all bloodshot yeah dude it's which is freaky. Very, it's, very much, it's very much like a dramatized like kid's perspective of that definitely but, it's but freaky that spot. it was like every time i closed my fucking eyes at the beginning of the night last night i saw that shot <laughs> <laughs> and i was like <laughs> oh dude oh yeah. god yeah it was it, it I, I felt so unsettled by it yeah well dude because, and- it's not abnormal for a normal person to sometimes get up in the middle of the night and go grab a glass of water no <laughs> like, dude that, I, I, that, I think that's the most unsettling thing is that like you could have barely missed a dude yeah. <laughs> like stealing like, your shit yeah and that yeah exactly like you, you could have just crossed paths like you you're just you know whew. yeah uh, yeah but okay so the the movie though it it starts in kind of a lighter place like i'd say does that make um, I, I mean, not director, necessarily light. The director but like, describes it as a tragic comedy. Yeah, well, that, that, I, I totally definitely, see. Definitely. It's very witty. It's very smart. There are some moments that had me laughing. Yeah, uh, definitely. And like that, it was it had, like it, the the actors had a, just like kept a really good cadence with like their their dialogue. Um, yeah, but the, the despite first it part, being the, a, despite it being, I I remember seeing a bunch of controversy with this movie when the Oscars didn't nominate any of the actors for a best actor or anything like that. Yeah. But yeah, it got nominated and won fucking everything else. <laughs> like it nearly swept every category it was in. Yeah. That, I mean, that is kind of strange got, though. They got no actor nods. I was like, I don't give a fuck if these guys aren't speaking English. These are no. great performances. Like that's, yeah. Dude, they were so the, tight. Their characters, the dad. their characters fuck. were so like, they, you know, I've, I honestly, I don't have a, like, uh, I don't think I have a really good reference for any other uh, works that these actors have done necessarily. Um, but they just like, I don't know. I felt like they just really took those characters and like kind of just like embodied them, like really took yeah. them to heart and like kind of just like, and it, it's you can told see in that such in the way. fluidity of their performance. Like, yeah. And, and, and it's told in such a way that like, it's very fluid, it's very cohesive, mm-hmm. but then also it's a very understandable story. Oh yeah. And yes, it's, yes, it becomes absurd. And like, it, become, it becomes truly a work of fiction eventually. Eventually. But, but you don't see it's that rooted, Exactly. It's rooted in a place where if you had no sort of like expectations of it, it would just be a family that's down on their luck that finds a way to like manipulate a yeah. rich fa- a, a dumb rich mom like, that's, and that's about it and yeah, exactly and that's and that's why uh that lighthearted sort of feeling comes off is because it it starts off in this way where like you you can kind of sympathize with them you can kind of associate with them and, and with the family in a way where they're they're getting this like glimmer of hope 
they're you know and now they're like manipulating yeah. the situation and, the, and now that they got like a footing more and there. more diabolical yeah, and it gets <laughs> and it, that but that's the thing dude it starts off with this place and then it gets yeah. more and more diabolical and then all of a sudden you're like oh my god i can't believe these fucking people are doing this like, yeah I mean, like, you start off for me it's like starting off you're introduced to these characters and they're just like trying to get a wi-fi signal yeah which i you can't afford to get their own wi-fi that's such a great scene though that is like that yeah. like it just sets up it just sets up where they're at so well yeah and, and that and shot they're, of they're them in, like, in, like by a, the toilet yeah and they're like in a slightly subterranean apartment mm-hmm. which also a semi-basement at, yeah it's like a semi-basement and i looked that up i and just out of curiosity supposedly those places are like extremely dangerous to live in yeah that's, and, that's what I've, I've heard um yeah because because of things like flooding you know what I mean? yeah which you see later in the movie which by the way what a beautifully shot sequence yes. as well yes so uh supposedly that's none of that is um shot on location none of the movie is shot on location oh wow it's all sets that were okay. made to the director's vision <sighs> and that's that set good. that they flooded it's a quarter mile long and past that they essentially turned it into a river yeah. And past that, they just CGI'd a Korean street. Whoa. Yeah, it's fucking that's, wild. Same thing cool. with the house. Oh, whoa. Yeah. That's cool. That, that's fucking insane. But yeah, that, um, I mean, those, yeah, those semi basement things, they just, I mean, it seems kind of charming at first. And then, like, it you, seems like it could be nice. Yeah. But then you learn, like, I, can't I mean, be at yeah. the bottom of a hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then, like, quickly you start seeing, like, uh, you know, the negatives of where they're at. Also, like, that dude coming by to take a piss right in front of their fucking house. Maybe one person can live there, but definitely not four. Oh, my like, God, that, no. Uh, I, I mean, could like, not imagine living with four people in a space like that. Yeah. I am I'm. I thought it was, um, I thought it was fascinating. Like, uh, I watched Wisecrack's video on Parasite. They were talking about, like, the symbolism of all of it and how, mm-hmm. because the director had so much control over set design, he was really able to milk the symbolism. You had nice. the rich, the rich, the, the Kims, the rich family. They have floor to ceiling windows looking out at their yard. Yeah. Then the poor family has just a He's small like a window. Little... They're barely, they're barely afloat. Yep. And then you have the dude under the ground hiding away, unable to see anything, any part of the outside. And it's supposed to, to show how slippery of a slope it is. Falling yeah, into that cycle of pro- poverty and being being fucked over eventually so hard that you just lose it completely. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's fucking interesting. Um, you know, one of my other favorite, like one of my favorite directors, uh, Wes Anderson. He Absolutely. he he usually has <laughs> talk about re- set design. Yeah, he usually has really detailed sets that usually play parts in in his movies, and yeah. and I love when directors have that opportunity to not only play with actors. Uh, but also like the 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 sets and the and the places that they are in because they do like things like that where you you know viewing the world through their win- their different windows yeah, like, yeah. that shit like leaves like a, a lasting impression on on you and the uh, as you look at these characters later on yeah. too you know what I mean and like that's I mean, like their their admiration of the giant yard and like that view later yeah. uh, as they see that house and stuff is is like that makes 100 percent sense yeah i mean it's it's like well in wes anderson film like you said the the set is a character mm-hmm. and in some cases in some of the films i would even call it a caricature you know oh, for sure <laughs> like it's a dramatized sort of version of like an opulent reality like in grand Beauty best hotel mm-hmm. in this in parasite it's like there's so much detail in the sets but it's just a it's not a it's it's not so past reality you know no and that's what yeah that's what sucks you in even more though in the whole movie is that yeah is it that feels real exactly it, and that's a, that is something like a little different than like wes anderson for sure like um but yeah if like and that's uh, i don't know like that's the, again like kind of one, one of the things i liked about the characters and the actors as well was that they seem to just like and maybe it's because they're most of them were unknown so i didn't have any expectations yeah. from them I but think the only one that, that I'd ever seen before was the uh, the dad from the poor family. Yeah, he. Well, I've seen he's in like every one of that the the director's films. Was he in Snowpiercer? He, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. He had like a small role in Snowpiercer, and like I've seen him. I've seen his face around in a handful of movies. Fair enough. But I, um, I, I yeah, not enough where he's like a big name, but enough where I was able to recognize him. Yeah. 
Uh, so what did you think about like the 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 kind of story of the, the, the like the stone like the wealth stone that they're given? Like dude, it was a- fucking tragic, dude. Oh my god! Like the last to time- bring wealth and prosperity, and it symbolizes the beginning of their just like shit show of their life collapsing yeah. even more. Who's the character? Min Min drops it off yeah, yeah. and like talks talks fucking kevin or whatever or yeah, is kevin. kevin his fake name kevin's his american name whatever okay, his american name whatever uh <laughs> i'd prefer i'd to... prefer not okay not whatever i just prefer to not butcher the korean name <laughs> fair yeah there's definitely sometimes like sometimes when i'm trying to pronounce things man like i do feel bad like, i genuinely am trying to pronounce things right and i sound like an asshole doing it <laughs> and yeah. then i'm like what's worse man me sounding like an asshole or just admitting that like i don't know how to pronounce it yeah, <laughs> I don't we don't know. know. We don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> um, but I, I, I mean, I just didn't honestly. I this is how poor I do on on this. I didn't take the time to research the fucking actor. No, uh, you're good. But, but like when when that character gets kind of the the mission almost from men to like go take this job at this yeah, rich yeah. people's house and go. It's an opportunity that somebody of like his social level would never get. Yeah, exactly. And and so it's interesting that he comes bearing that stone that's supposed to symbolize wealth and as well as like as well as dropping off like basically like a, a job right there yeah. in, the, in the kid's lap and so it's like that's the start of their their quest for betterment in this movie and it's like yeah, yeah. although like what's fucking interesting I, actually i can't even say betterment like they're just uh, they're they're just pulling another con in a lot of ways yeah and, it and goes from like this like nearly like optimistic type yeah. of like oh they're this sad families finally getting their break yeah to like oh these guys are actually the fucking villains yeah Which is and, and that's there's no antagonist in this movie the the way it transitions that story like through that sto- whole story though yeah is so and is so like it just like i don't know like i was sympathetic for with for them for a really long time in the movie i felt like and then i was like why are you doing that why are you doing that a little more and more and then i was like fuck dude <laughs> like why'd you do that yeah. like and, and yeah like i think i think the point of like where i was like what the fuck is wrong with these people was when she like planted the panties in the driver's car yeah yeah like, totally what the fuck yeah i was like what the fuck's going on right now <laughs> and yeah, it's like oh but, they're getting the data job but it, it became like I don't know. It's like when you get to that point, though, it was, it was still kind of shocking to see them as like this non-sympathetic group. You're, you're just like, wait, I'm supposed you, to like you. Can't you. Help I'm supposed to like you a little. Cheer for them. You well, know? definitely not. And uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you you still cheer for them. Uh, I mean, I guess you do kind of like throughout the entire movie, but but you just you, you lose the like the hopefulness of of, of yeah. aspect of like the, liking the those r- characters, and you're just interested in what the fuck they're doing away. after a while. <laughs> And um, even like, and especially like when the rich family goes out of town and they just sort of like take over the house. Oh my God. That was like, such an I'm intense. Like, These fucking assholes. Like yeah. they're just drinking. Well, and yeah, it's like, like they get so comfortable, like fucking with his family. And they're, and like, and the like son's talking positions. about how like, who's, Kevin's like, I'm going to marry her. Like this is going to be my place, which is interesting because it's exactly what Min was, get, was saying at the beginning of the movie. Yeah, dude. I was just about to say that. Like that was such an interesting transition from like him basically just wanting uh, like a gig to like wanting more and more. And then all of a sudden he's like literally taking that Min dude's like agenda Position. and idea and like, just like, this is mine now. Like I, I've adopted yeah. that identity. Like, and what's what's interesting is like in some of the videos I watch, like at further breaking down the movie, a lot of that sort of character change is about him idolizing people that are of a higher societal standpoint than him. Yeah. So like, I guess even at the end of the movie, when he has that like dream of him buying the house, mm-hmm. he's in the same outfit as men at the beginning of the movie. Oh shit. I didn't realize and his that. hair is very similar as well. And it was hair- purposeful from the director. Wait, 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 wait. So that was a dream sequence, though? Ambiguous. We'll get there. So we'll get there. fucking ambiguous. Don't lay, don't lay that on me. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. It's uh, the direct. So we'll get to that. But yeah. just for now, the director said that's supposed to be up to your own interpretation. Oh, were they so wild, Were they dude. so far gone that they were unable to get it or was it possible for them to break the cycle of poverty that they were stuck in oh my god dude that's so interesting um anyway so okay yeah so but 
that where where do we leave off? Uh, there's that so that scene in the living room when they when the family leaves, like yeah. they that's a really great point like point in the movie because again like it's it's basically them being so flagrant uh and disrespectful disrespectful with like the con that they're pulling out and the people that they're like they're they're using at this moment which i mean i will say like they are not and when you look at the movie they are not the everybody in the movie is a parasite in some different way Definitely. whether it's whether it's like the family mooching off of them or the dude in the basement or the maid mm-hmm. or like the the wife getting the rich wife getting drugs from the rich husband oh, which is yeah, yeah, yeah. what a weird scene too yeah. and like, or like them getting all these menial the rich family using the poor people to get like the menial tasks done around the house you know yeah like everybody's relying on somebody else and for some reason there's like this societal like breakdown like all these people are poor yet in reality everybody needs each other yeah well, and like we'll, we'll get there but like the only thing that by the end of the movie really brings these people together is that they're all affected by the violence that come and the negative outcomes that come from that kind of uh social imperfection let's say that is interesting like uh none of the like positive aspects of this like these kind of relationships really like bring people more close they they well, i mean because they are all kind of using each other in a way but yeah. but yeah like it's only when like it's only when shit like really hits the fan that everybody's like oh. yeah Everybody's <laughs> pushed apart or hurt by it ultimately. Yeah. I'm just fucking crazy. Um, yeah. Okay. So so when they come back, because like the family, the rich family, uh, the Kims, they they're out camping, I believe. Yeah, well, they're not- out camping, and well, the maid comes back. Yeah, the, which is fucking insane. The maid comes back, and I was like, she looks a bit creepy at this point. Like that's she- when I felt the tone changing from that sort yeah, of yeah. like twisted wait, wait, wait. comedy. Hold on, we uh, rewind real quick, real quick. So to get to get uh the maid who has been in the house from my understanding the maid was like working at the house when the original architect of the house yeah there and has been like she essentially came with it uh to get rid of the maid and replace uh her with uh fucking (laughs) what's her name um with with, chung Sook right yeah i think that's the fake name they give her (laughs) uh yeah that's the fake name they give her because i I just remember that because the dude later on (sighs) the scene later on um but uh so they, they they basically like like fuck with her allergies, right? They learn that she's allergic to peaches. It's so they fucked up. It is, dude. I felt so bad for that lady. I was like, fuck, dude. She has nothing to do with these people. Yeah. And like, and well, I mean, kind of, but like, but she's just like, she's just the pawn in the middle of all this shit, and she's getting like her health fucking jeopardized and stuff. Yeah, she was wild. That's a laugh. I think that's, that's she. Laugh. <laughs> I know, but like it's almost like comical. It's it. It was, but yeah. Well, that was the problem. Especially with it. she, like, if there is one person that I feel bad for <laughs> in, the, in this movie, it's her. Yeah. It's her, and maybe the rich kid, the rich family's daughter. <laughs> I feel like they were the like that's that's a for things we'll talk about later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like she. I mean, like I just I felt like she got kind of screwed over, just getting been getting fucked with. But but the way they go about fucking with her in that in even though it is like really detrimental to her as like a person, uh, the way it's like done in the movie is is a little uh, comedic in a way. It's like yeah. it's very lighthearted, and it's just sort of like again, you're just sort of like caught off guard by the sinister nature of it. Uh, yeah yeah that's kind of that's what i was gonna way. say is like it's shot very in like a fun way but the undertones are like really getting to a point where like this is fucked up and yeah like i remember me and kate watching it yesterday we're like nervously laughing the whole way through that scene yeah i'm saying like, it was just sort of like oh wow what that that sucks and then you're like oh and they brush like the, the peach fuzz on her yeah and, and the, but, like, but later uh, on though in that scene when she comes back to the house uh and they're like all they've been drinking in the living room and all that yeah, shit yeah. and she, like after things kind of go sour they let her in right and and what happens first does, does she do they have like their scuffle or does no, she no, they, like, they have like the a they have first? a conversation she goes to the basement and the and that's uh right, that's right chung 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 what chung was soup? Name? Chung, soup? chung soup i think chung soup she um she goes down there with her and they find the dude downstairs. Yeah, that's like the mom. And then, they, and then right? they like yeah. fall down the stairs and yeah. they find out that they're a family. Yeah. And essentially you hold them hostage with the phone. Yeah, dude. Uh, by the way, then I the want to almost say up. that Chung Su, her, her as like, I, I mean, I, I, I think that's, 
the character's name for sure. I mean, I'm not saying like I just think like I can't remember if that's like the actual like if that's the mother's actual name or if that's just if, like the fake name that she. If she has an actual name, it was said less than her fake name. Fair. <laughs> so, uh, like, so so but she's a badass dude. Like she does not. She, she, she just goes charge it into situations. She's like, fuck it, let's do this. And like, yeah. <laughs> uh, Which, but I, I want to say, I want to say like they have that fucking brawl. They drop the peaches on her. Yeah. That was what I was going to reference the stairs. Dude. Oh my God. That's again, though, they do this lady so dirty, like, like in the middle of I mean, a fight, the, they know what her allergy is. So the daughter runs to the fucking kitchen, grabs a bag full of peaches and rubs the lady's face in it. And like, and it's just like, dude, it's like a fucking killer. Like, it's not, it's not a slasher, but you're still like, that's brutal. Yeah. <laughs> that's- well, that, well, exactly, dude. You just, and you, you don't expect it from them because they've been going, about everything in this like sly light-hearted way i think i think what's so crazy about the parasite is like for the most part up until the end it's all the like violence and all the terrible things happening to people are so nearly grounded yeah definitely like everybody's exp- for the most part if you have an allergy you've experienced that kind of irritation hmm. even if it's not severe you have an idea of what that can do to people yeah so that's it's in my opinion it's like it's weirdly more effective than if they were to like stab her. Like, oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Like because because it's a little yeah again it's a little more real like you know, yeah yeah. I mean like and um, then after that when the family calls, that's uh, when I was like oh fuck it's about to really go down. <laughs> Which also continuing off of like these weird like societal like barriers that don't act they're just a facade and a lie. Mm-hmm. That dish that she asked for them to cook the ramdan. Yeah was made up for the movie because mm-hmm. the kid likes just like n- normal noodles, like instant ramen. Yeah. So that's the ra, the ram. And then the don is udon. And they wanted, because the rich mom is, this is from the director, the rich mom's uncomfortable giving the child something a low class citizen would eat. She insists on putting Wagyu beef in it. What? Yeah. That's, wh- so that's, that's why? It was yeah. like that particular dish. That's that's. I mean, they that's really that detailed. That's really detailed for like the movie, which is cool. I love that there's yeah. like little things so, are hidden in there. But and it's, it's it's legitimately the dish is rich people's meat on yeah. top of poor people food. <laughs> yeah, which is so. I mean, just in terms of like the entire movie, that's such an interesting way of introducing that's that theme actually again just the movie like, yeah, that's, that's what i mean like that's like you're just looking at the movie in a fucking dish at that point <laughs> like, yeah i know it's just fascinating and like cool. I, I saw that this morning and i was just like what the fuck this is amazing yeah that's rad uh yeah okay and so but but like from their shit it's a fan <laughs> but their house get- so so okay before they come before they come back though like right before they come back uh they go down to the basement. They find out that the, that 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 the old maid's husband has been living down there for what four years was it? Yeah, it was like when the house was sold. They didn't disclose that there was a nuclear bunker in the bottom of it. Yes, so he <laughs> down there without being disturbed, pretty much. And he basically has. He's definitely a little wacky already. Dude, I right? was like, is this like, what quarantine's gonna do to us? Oh my god, man! Yeah, and he. I mean, like crazy. Dude, that guy. That guy just gave me bad vibes from the get go when he was introduced. I was like, this guy is an uncomfortable character. It's it's uh, it's very uncomfortable, but then at the same time, I feel terrible for him. <laughs> well, absolutely, absolutely. The dude's hounded by creditors. The dude, yeah. like the dude, can has to literally hide in somebody's basement. Did you did you pick up that his failed business was the same business that the poor family had that failed? Yeah, but it just went worse for him because he had bad investors. Yeah, and when they kind of like, I think they like they recognized that they just like didn't want to. They didn't even want like like the characters themselves to recognize it. They just didn't want to fucking say anything. Yeah, there. But like that was an interesting like tie, you know. It's wild because because again like it's it's this idea that like I don't know like there's all these different layers to uh, society right but are they all really like that like distant from each other you know yeah. it's a slippery slope right it's a slippery slope from one fucking I love, level to I love the that, next I love that scene where the family comes back and there's the weird sort of like sex scene type thing <laughs> on the couch while they're yeah. under the under the count. Ca- under the table that was so so wild i was just like what is happening here how yeah. are they like and, and 
it's so uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable because the entire time you're just like, they're going to get caught. They're, they they got to get caught. They're obviously going to be seen down there. <laughs> when, they, when, they, when he's like scooting across the floor and they wake up right then, I was like, yeah. Oh fuck <laughs> dude that was wild um but but before but, they started like grabbing each other's parts and whatnot like weren't they talking they were talking shit and this is really important they were talking shit about mr smell. kim's smell which is something that the kid brought up the little kid brought up earlier yeah and uh that becomes i mean that becomes a like a whole thing um but be honest, it's, it's, it's really yeah. embarrassing though, dude. It sucks because it's like, it's like you listen it's to them so talking dismissive. shit about him and it's so dismissive of him. And it's like, you, uh, you again, even though you're what you're watching this scene where oh, the dude's people, like underneath the that table. might not have watched the movie, but are just listening to this anyway. Hmm. The, the rich dude essentially says he smells like poor, poor, poor person. Yeah. He smells like the subway. Like, yeah. That's. And it's just like, yeah, it's just so fucking, it's just so fucking intense, like strange because like you feel sympathetic again for these character who is in the middle of this other dude's house, having gotten drunk off of like this other dude's like, you know, like, like spirits and yeah. having been like using him for, you know, a you know, shady gig and yeah. it's, and, but you, then you turn around and you just feel bad for him. You're like, fuck yeah. dude, this dude's getting shit on because he smells bad. He can't fucking help it. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. And that's, it's sort of weird because this movie, the movie just has, it has no real like heroes and no real villains, No, again, yeah, but just right. people are a product of their circumstance, Yeah, which I want to talk about probably towards the end of the episode. I want to bring up a little comparison to something else sort of under that circum, like in, in, in that vein. Yeah. But just, just to, just to keep moving because we've already talked about this for like 30 fucking minutes the um we, we we get to the point i think a really effective scene is them running down the streets going from the bottom of the hill all the way down to their home yeah it's agreed flooded. it was a, an incredible visual and then on top of it getting down to the bottom and finding like absolute chaos and like yeah, that flooding ha- because because they were up there mooching off of the rich family they weren't down there to close their window and save their actual home yeah yeah but uh, it, I mean, again, it was just like it. You said it earlier, but it was just such a like a gorgeous like fucking sequence and scene, yeah. you know. Um, and it's like it, that, and I think that brought up like a whole other thing for me was that like how sus, how like impervious that family at the top of the hill is, and even for like people of like n- not like super high stature, but like middle class people can get totally fucking destroyed by something like that as well. Oh yeah, dude. Like yeah. natural disasters, like natural disasters, like that was just like a torrential downpour that like over, like that fucked up the sewer. Yeah. And oh, absolutely. Destroyed their home. Like that's like a weird. It it, it doesn't. It's it's not. It's something that like it's really unsettling. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it's just one of those things. It's like it's a reminder, you know, like uh, it's fucking nature, right? Like like yeah. shit can happen to anybody at any time. Unfortunately, again, like again, it's like another thing that seems to happen to to this family. But it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, and that's I think that's the moment that really breaks the father's spirit too. Like he dude. was always like, I got a plan, but then at that point, he's like, I don't have a fucking plan, dude. And that I line did. when he, yeah, oh, he's like, he's, I don't have a plan because it'll only lead to disappointment. Like that's that is soul crushing. Yeah, well, especially because like uh, you know, like he's the only little bit of like guiding light that the, I think that group has. And it's yeah. sort of just like, mm, <laughs> there and, is okay. none. I um, just, I want to, I want to get to the, I want to get to that last sequence. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, I feel like we've said um, en- enough at this point. And that's, <laughs> it really reminded me of a, like once, once upon a time in Hollywood where it was like this slow burn of a buildup and like yeah. little puzzle pieces coming into place, all that lead up to this explosion yeah of circumstance at the end <laughs> boom and yeah dude it yeah you're right dude it, it does the kid going down there with the rock yeah so he goes down there he's the only one that seems to be really racked with guilt over the fact that yeah well, uh, I think they, the mom and the daughter were gonna bring them food you think so yeah remember Was they, they were they made they made a meal for them they were gonna bring him down Oh shit! Oh, I mean, I mean, yeah. I'm like, but, anyway, then, but, but then they but, got pulled away by the rich family. Oh, that's right. Um, so the kid, the kid, uh, he he's walking. He like goes there, and he's like, I mean, I'd be freaked out to like walk down there because you don't know what the fucking scene you're walking down to. Yeah. Because, uh, but he's bringing that wealth stone with him, right? Yeah. He, he's carrying Which that big. We ass can stone. only assume why. <laughs> yeah, and like 
oh man i mean i'm trying to picture like so the last time you you see that basement basically the dude the husband is tied up he, well the husband, he, he's the husband, tied up but he's been like bashing his face against the light trying to get yeah. the kid the and, the old the rich kid's attention he's, with he's basically Morse code. smashing his fucking head into the into the light the, so he's lady, all the lady has been now like not like, basically yeah she's been like she had her face rubbing peaches she got kicked down the fucking stairs like she's fucking dead and she yeah. died right in front of his eyes yeah, i was her husband. terrified to fucking walk down those that fucking like I, but, and, but then what what sort of you can tell the the son was really racked with guilt about it though because he immediately was like hey are you are you, are you okay like he he wanted to be sure that she was all right yeah would, but yeah. then he gets then he gets choked and he yep. gets his head bashed in <laughs> yeah. with the fucking stone. One that's the interesting ending with that stone, right? Is like, boom! It ends up doming that kid and like, yeah, comes full and circle back to the goes, back to him. Then the crazy dude goes up the stairs <gasps> and pulls a knife. Yeah, and makes a beeline into the kid's birthday party. <laughs> yeah, so stabs as Jessica. As, as soon as he sees Jessica, runs right up to her, stabs her in the chest, which I didn't think was going to happen. Actually, I thought there was going to be some sort of interceding thing, and then yeah. boom, right into her fucking chest. <laughs> yeah, anyway. yeah, fuck. And, uh, the, and the kid has a seizure again, yeah, yeah. which is set up earlier in the film. Yeah, they, and they also, meanwhile, they're pressing they're pressing the wound on the daughter. The kid's having a seizure. Okay, not to dismiss people that are epileptic or anything. Seizures are serious. But if, Mm. like, it's, like, unless the kid's, like, choking on his tongue, like, it's, you don't have to bring, you don't have to run to the emergency room. Some adults could be spared for the other situation, we'll say. (laughs) Yes, some adults could be spared for helping the poor girl on the ground bleeding out. Who just got stabbed in the fucking chest. (laughs) Who dies. Yeah. And that's actually like I, I've like of all the characters, I didn't really I don't know. I felt bad that she died because I thought like she had like this promising hope of getting out of that situation. Yeah. Um, and they kind of allude to that the entire movie, which is why she so, actually was talented. Yeah, which is why it's so it's such a bummer to let she fucking dies right there. Yeah. Um but so Mr. the her dad, Mr. Kim, is like pressing the wound, right? And and yeah. she basically is just like, Stop pressing it, it fucking hurts. Like yeah. Just like let me die at that point, pretty yeah. much. And then there's he, like the- he throws the keys so they can yeah. take the which also that's sort of it for me is that he that's his daughter. He's pressing the wound. But then also I feel like he has at least some level of respect for the other parent that wants to take care of their child. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I'm not gonna leave here, but here, go. Go to the fucking hospital. Yeah, I, I agree. Like I think that was actually like a really like specific moment of respect that he was trying to show. The, it's, the wealthy it's man still, it still sucks <laughs> and still i feel like the wealthy dude's in the wrong for prioritizing that over the stab stabbing Definitely. victim but what he did what he did next was 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 the slight that went it was the straw that broke the camel's back yeah right it leans he over like, which he, also it's important to say the keys f- get deflected when uh chung suk is getting tackled and then yeah. skewers the guy yeah uh, that was one of my favorite. That was in the the moment in the movie. I was like, she's such a fucking badass because she just like she, the dude's just like Chong Suk, and she's just like fuck it, like she just charges she, she at him. She's like, let's she fucking do it. The knife. She yeah. has a hatchet. She yeah, dodges she, the knife and then skewers him with the rest of the yeah. sausages. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. And then, so the, Which, so here's, he, here's the weird thing is that the movie's so unsettling, but it's sort of fucking funny to see the dude skewered and there's just a bunch of little like sausages on the end of the skewer next to him. That's what I mean, man. They like they play with you like that. They're like, don't 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 get sucked in too much by this like violence and stuff like that. Like yeah. uh, they pull you out of it a little bit. Um, but pretty much the the rich guy comes over and he he reaches for the keys and he plugs his nose. Yeah, he makes and- a smell like the dead guy that has been living in his basement smells so horrendous. The whole and that's but it, it is, dude. It's it's fucking frustrating. The entire situation that's happening and this dude has to stop and like plug his nerve. fucking nose because because it's such a like, strong stink. So what does what does Mr. Kim do after that though? He, he picks up the chef's knife he was, that Chung Suk was getting attacked with and stabs the dude in the chest. He's like, that's the last motherfucker you that, he, that you talk shit about about their smell, yeah. man. He's like, uh, did you catch that he died that um he died too? Yep. Okay, sweet. Yep. Yeah. Well, and like, dude, I didn't I like I honestly didn't like I felt very little attachment to that with a wealthy father figure. Yeah, I thought and, he was a dick. Yeah. And so, like, you know, him dying, I was just actually I was sort of like, I thought that was justice for Mr. Kim. Yeah, I thought it was justice, but it was like, 
so abrupt and with the grounded nature of the world for the most part it immediately felt terrible <laughs> anyway. oh yeah for sure well because you didn't because you didn't want to see him turn into that you know what no, i mean you didn't want to see him break and then become the dude in the basement essentially Ex- exactly and that and is exactly immediately what after that yeah because the ct cctv's off he's able to just run into the basement and hide in there in the in the chaos yeah, which he I thought was I thought that was so, I thought that was fucking clever as hell. And it it's was so clever tra- as hell, but it's so soul crushing. It's so it's, tragic. It's so <laughs> sad. <laughs> and then, but okay, so so the letters that they were like reading to each other, yeah, yeah, were those what they had written in Morse code, and they then that was what they were like sending to each other so every day, I hoping think, that one would see. I think that the father had no hope of ever getting that letter because he's completely isolated. But he Absolutely. was hoping that his son would get the response from him yeah or the or his initial sending but then the son was writing it more as like a more as sort of like a thing for himself to be like i'm going to get there yeah i'm going yeah, to save you and that's what i thought i was just like i was just like well because in my head like the way the movie ended that's why when you mentioned it my it's a, a potential dream sequence yeah which so that's that's what i thought was fascinating at the end of the movie number one actually this is something that more symbolism he puts the like lucky rock away in a river yeah and it perfectly blends in it's no different than any other rock yeah that was really neat well uh once again just perpetuating that it's all bullshit and then people being above anybody else is a lie <laughs> like yeah. that's we're all in it there. Everybody, yeah everybody's everybody's just another one fucking rock into the stream the yeah. um but i think so i guess in the end it's shown as like a dream almost and then it immediately cuts back to him in his shitty little house in his in his sub basement yeah, that's yeah. the last scene of the movie is him yep. in the sub basement and the director was very forthcoming about it being like not concrete oh man that was the shitty thing though dude like i thought that that was the like the conclusion for that family got it uh and so, like, I was really hoping for that. I, you know I hope I mean? it is personally. Like, I, I, but like, it makes way more sense that it, uh, you know, it ends up being like a kind of a pipe yeah. dream, and that's just what he was like hoping for. Shit, dude. Oh my god, that movie's so fucking good. I'm so glad it's we so finally fucking, fucking watched it. I want to, I want, I want to say one thing though. Yeah. Joker or Parasite? Uh, Joker or Parasite? So we're. Just, I'm personally we, going Joker have, because those, I, I like. Yeah, Joker's Joker's phenomenal. I give Parasite the edge. Mm. I think Parasite's a, a better. It looks it looks better in a lot of ways. But Joker Joker just nah. I think I think I think Joker hits a, a note that's really like been been percolating for a while. And I'm yeah. not saying that, that. But I think I think Parasite does too. I think they're thematically so similar. They I think they are similar in a lot of ways. I just think the the delivery uh, is different. a little different. Um, Which also like okay. in terms of, like force of it, you know, Joker. Joker was a fucking incredible, and it, it goes. They're bang both, they're the both incredible movies, but yeah, I think that without being, I don't want to like bag on either one of them because no, they're both, gonna, they're both, they're both amazing both, movies. They're both amazing movies, yeah. but they have, but they're very similar movies when it comes to theme and the overall like essence of it. Agreed. So I want to say we're we're running low on time. We're gonna have to wrap it up in a moment. We had some other stuff we want to talk about, but Zoom is gonna shut us down. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, um, but uh, I want to talk next week. Snyder cuts official. Oh, Air cut yes. might be happening, and I sort of want to talk about Joker versus Parasite. Yeah, let's continue this conversation because I, I I am intrigued by intrigued by the comparison. Yeah, I think they're both so relevant. They'll be interesting to sort of go back and forth and see I, what, how we feel about it. I agree, and I, like you said earlier, I don't want to discredit either one. They both have actual real important messages, and they're both really incredible movies. Dude, uh, it's so. like saying it's like saying which is which is better, Django Unchained or fucking Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You know, like, exactly. they're both Tarantino yeah. movies. They're both the essence is the same. They're both they're, great. They're both marinara. They're both <laughs> rich. I think if that's a rating, we could give Parasite yeah. rich marinara. Rich savory marinara. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah, we got a lot of stuff to cover next week too. So the news, the news is slowly building up, folks. The news is a flowing. <laughs> Partially right, because man. we took an entire podcast to talk about Parasite. I can't believe we talked about it this entire time. It's enough. It's, it's just so it's fucking there. Good. It is. It really Listener, is. it's on Hulu. Even if you listen to it all the way through, listen to us all the way through, go and watch the fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, do yourself a favor and watch the fucking movie. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what episode this was off the top of my head. It's either 40 or 41. 
I want to say it's 41. I'm opening up my phone. He's doing it. We're going to wait. This, plug, plug Oatly. <laughs> we, oh, uh, Oatly, delicious, goes with just about any fucking coffee. Uh, there you go. Want. Oatly, sponsor us, man. Sponsor us. Um, also, plug, uh, follow us if you're listening to your hot dog on Instagram at Old Heart Radio and on Twitter at Old Heart and Space. Uh, you know, if you're feeling so peachy keen. There you go. <laughs> hey and be sure to listen to into me navi talking about some interesting things over there yeah i love that last episode you guys did honestly it was, it was a really good conversation you guys brought up some good points oh, yeah. like, especially about talking about passive uh listening and like active listening i think it's really really interesting yeah uh, but yeah uh, this has been another episode of matinee edition i'm number jared. 41 oh number 41 all right i'm jared uh you go out there and uh have a good day Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs>